Hello, it's a great day at a woman's place and we are so thankful that you are taking just a small smidget of your time to join us today. My name is Danette Hutchinson. As usual, I pray that something is said to encourage your heart, your hope, your faith, your trust and confidence in God and in God alone. I am so glad to continue our Firm Foundation series. We're going to be done with this in just a few weeks, but there's a few more layers that we need to add to our foundation before we catapult into a new discussion. Um, some of the things we're going to add, the layers that we're going to add, I'm just going to tell you straight up, they may be kind of challenging for you. Um, it's going to require us to think a little differently about um, how we maybe have been brought up or what our family narrative has been or even what our experiences have taught us. Did you know that just because an experience has taught us something does not necessarily mean that the truth that we derive from that narrative or from that experience is really a firm foundation to stand on. That doesn't mean that it is true. I'm not saying it's not valid, but I'm saying there may be better ways, better perceptions to think about a matter, better stories to tell yourself so that we don't continue to have to experience those things over and over again. So the first thing that I want to talk about is this book right here, Women of the Bible. Can you see it? Women of the Bible, a year long study of 52 remarkable women. Now I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I already know. Some of you are going to say, oh my God, not another Bible study. Oh my gosh, another book on women in the Bible. Oh my gosh, I'm so done with this. I'm so over it. And that may be true. That may be your narrative and that may be your perspective. But I would ask you to consider this one thing. Do we know everything there is to know about the women in the Bible? I would unequivocally say, I don't know everything that there is to know about the women in the Bible, but I do know we have some commonalities. I do know that. And some of the commonalities that we have, we can learn from what they experienced and how God dealt with their situation and how we can look forward to him then being involved in ours as well. And that's what this Bible study is all about. It's not about comparing ourselves with other women in the Bible. It is more importantly about knowing that if God dealt with them in their circumstance, then God will deal with me in mine. That's what this is all about. And in 2024, um, this is what a woman's place is going to be talking about for the whole year. Amen. So some of the things that we have in common, we all, not, not we all, we have in common, number one, that we are women. We talked about women last week. If you saw my post on Facebook, you know that I said, own it, girl, you are somebody. We are somebody in God, ladies. We are somebody in the body of Christ. We are somebody in our families. We are somebody in our homes. I know circumstances don't always blow that trumpet, but it is nevertheless true. We are somebody. We are a corporate group of a gender that God created and we are somebody. I shared last week or week before last that another word for Azer in um, Genesis where it, the, the Bible declares uh, she shall be called woman. She shall be called Azer, not just a help, not just someone that embraces, that surrounds, that supports, but also 
that warrior, that warrior. Now, I am very careful when I use that analogy of a warrior. First of all, I have a military background. I was in the military for a number of years. So I have a military background. I know what it looks like and what it feels like to be in the military, to carry um, a weapon, to have to fire that weapon in um, basic training and in um, qualifying and all of that. I understand all of that, how to take that sucker apart in the dark and put it back together and it still works <laughs> when, you, when the daylight comes. I understand going to the field and having literally a pot that you might have to use, right? I understand all of those things. Um, but when we talk about a warrior in 2023, it takes on a whole new meaning. It takes on a whole new light. It takes on a whole new standard. And, and unfortunately, this is one of the things I said you might not agree with me on. But remember one thing. We are daughters of God. There's a standard that he has set for us. And he's not going to move that standard, whether we like it or not. And so there is a place for us even as warriors, even as Azer, there is a place for us, a plan and a purpose for us to still carry the standard that the Father has given us. Amen. So when we talk about warrior out of the book of Genesis, it is not talking about literally grabbing your sword and cutting off somebody's ear. Amen. In other words, it more encapsulates the mindset of not giving up, being a warrior that stays in the fight. Amen. The best battles I heard are fought on our knees. Amen. Staying in the fight, being consistent, being persistent until the battle is won. Amen. And we have that strength that God has given us. So that's one thing that we have in common with the women of the Bible that we're going to study in 2024. Another thing that we have in common, I'm just setting the stage. Amen. Another thing that we have in common is this. They had household family situations that were not always the prettiest to look at. Some of them had issues with um, spouses that didn't understand them spouses that didn't believe they had an encounter with God, spouses that questioned their ability, their uh, faithfulness, their integrity, integrity. And so families where children went astray, right? They had the same issues that we could look at in 2023. What are some other issues that they had? They had some issues with finances. They had issues with paying bills. There was often the situation where the women lost their husbands in battle. And so they were left with not only caring for the home as it is now, but also making sure the creditors that the husband had are taken care of. And yet God in his might and power and infinite wisdom had a structure and a plan for them to do just that. Those are women in the Bible. There are also women in the Bible who don't have a very good reputation. Amen. Jezebel is one. She, her name is kind of synonymous to Judas. Nobody wants to be named that and nobody wants to name their children that. Amen. Why? Because of the reputation that they hold, because of, you know, the story. I mean, everybody, when most people, when they hear Jezebel, they know if they don't know her whole story, do you know she was a queen? <laughs> do you know that her, um, her parents were politically, um, entrenched in politics and that's why she was as well but she also was a woman that took matters into her own hands more than enough times right that's in here amen and then we talk about um the difference between rachel and her sister leah 
right? And how Leah, they say she had, um, we call it bedroom eyes, but the Bible calls it weak eyes, right? Either way it goes, Jacob didn't know who he, he, who he was with on their marriage night, right? So we have women who are literally overlooked right in the middle of intimate situations. That's in this women of the Bible book. So we're not just talking about the, the glory days. We're not just talking about the hay days. We're not just talking about the cupcakes and, you know, the blueberry muffins. <laughs> we're not talking about those things only. We're also looking at the depth of these women, the heart of these women. And the question that we are going to have to ask ourselves while we um, explore these women is, how do I relate to that? Or a better question is, do I mirror her behavior? Do I see myself in this woman in any way, shape, form, or fashion? Number one. And number two, how did God deal with her? And number three, if that's how he dealt with her and my behavior mimics her behavior, then guess what? I might need to make some changes so that I can have a better outcome in the situation. Is God good? Yes, he is. Is he gracious? Yes, he is. Is he merciful? Absolutely. But he also loves his daughters and he will discipline us as needed. That is in this book. I'm telling you, it's going to be a great 2024 as it pertains to studying women of the Bible. What I don't want to get caught up in is the outward appearance of the women. Not net, and there will be some indications of those outward appearances of women, like the one that sits on the ledge in the city and she's all dolled up and calling for the simple ones to come into her house while her husband is away. That's in here too. Amen. And so we're just going to talk about real women. These were real women, just like we are real women. And they had an encounter with a real God. And so I'm looking forward to the Women of the Bible 2024 study, the study for 2024. I'm excited to see how I fit in. I have read some of these um, stories and believe me, it's been more than a couple of times where I found myself grabbing for tissue and repenting before the Lord because I was found out in the woman of this Bible. Amen. And so I'm looking forward to it, guys. I hope you go ahead and get yours. You can order yours, Women of the Bible. You can go ahead and order it off of guideposts.com or you can order it from Amazon. I've seen it at um, christianbooks.com. There's several places where you can order it. Go ahead and get yours. I think it's $12.99. So it's not that costly, but it's going to impart some wonderful wisdom to us in 2023 and 2024. I should say 2024. Amen. I'm telling you, there are some things coming. There are some things coming, ladies, where we are going to have to gird up our loins. We are going to have to purposely and determinedly stand our ground on a firm foundation. This is not just me having Monday, a woman's place, and I'm just sharing some stuff. There's some things coming down the road. There are some things coming down the road that we're not going to be able to control, aside from the fact of building a firm foundation on the word of God. Do you hear me? And do you hear my spirit? Amen. Let's get ready for it. Let's not be caught off guard. Let's get ready for it. Amen. So we can address the issues that come our way and watch and see what our mighty God will do on our behalf. This is Danette Hutchinson. And today is a woman's place. Amen. Believe it or not. But I needed to get this information out to you because time is going to fly. And I don't want 2024 coming. And then you're scrambling saying, I didn't get my book. I didn't get my book. Go ahead and plan to get your book. Put aside a couple of Starbucks coffees. That's about how much the book costs. And go ahead and get your book. Amen. And then you can start drinking Starbucks two weeks down the road. Amen. Go ahead and get your book. 
have it ready, have it set aside so that when January 1st comes or the first Monday in January, we are going to hit the floor running. Amen. Expecting God to do things in our lives, in our heart, in our mind, in our thoughts, in our emotions, because we are allowing him to have that space. Amen. Not that you're not already doing that, but we're going to do this together. Amen. So be blessed this week. Get your book, Women of the Bible, a year-long study of 52 remarkable women, and let's meet together. I will meet back with you next Monday at a woman's place. Amen. But go ahead and get yourself ready for the wonderful things that you're going to experience because of the loving God that we serve. As always, I pray that something is said to encourage your heart, your hope, your faith, your trust, and confidence in God and in God alone. I love you. You are somebody and we are somebody together. Own it, girl. In Jesus' name, amen.